Coming up, Universal decided to spend their Thursday by announcing a new park, Universal's Epic Universe. And now you're going to spend the next amount of time, I'm not sure how much, listening to two clowns talk about it. So live, that's that's weird, I haven't said that in forever, mm. live from the Bob Varley studio in Orlando, Florida, this is the Universal edition of the Diz Unplugged. This is episode 228 of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition for the week of August 1st, 2019. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect universal vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is also brought to you by DizBoards.com. If you're looking for even more information to help you plan your Universal Orlando vacation, head over to DizBoards.com and join the discussion today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I am your epic host, Craig Williams, and today I am joined alongside by my epic (laughs) co-host, Mr. Ryan, the Rhino Clavin. Oh, well, thank you, sir. No, thank, thank you. you. I, I literally have Rhino to owe my life to. I probably wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for him. I'd still be uh, stranded out on one of the highways around the area, but uh, we don't need to get into that today. <laughs> we have more important things to handle. And uh, first off, I want to thank uh, everyone who's watching us live out here right now. I know it's been forever since we've had a live Universal show, so uh, don't get used to this. It's not going to be the normal, uh, but it is something that is happening this very moment because of the huge announcement that Universal made this morning, and we are very excited about it. So uh, I don't think I have anything else to say besides, well, if you're not watching us live, then I hope you still enjoy what we're about to get to here, and uh, it's going to be exciting. So uh, I'm going to cut out the normal banter that we usually do where we make jokes and have fun right at the beginning and and get right in to talk about everything that happened so uh essentially earlier today at around uh, 10 o'clock ish at the orange county convention center uh, comcast corporation chairman and ceo brian l roberts announced the newest edition coming to universal orlando resort and that is universal's epic universe Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> so, uh, should we talk about the name right now? Or I, I we feel wait? like we should, because I know everyone was thinking it was going to be called Universal's Fantastic Worlds, and uh, I I am one who immediately I heard this, and I, 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 I hate it for a couple of reasons. I don't want to say I don't hate, hate it. Word. I feel like I, I, it doesn't roll correctly for me, Like because you're saying Universal Universe, and it's twice, but I feel like all of the universal properties should be referred to as the universe. Like that should be what is the universe. And maybe that's what they're doing here. I don't know, but it's just weird that their name is in there twice. It's like universal's epic universe. Also, I feel like the word epic has become one of those like annoying cliched words where any, anyone will be like, this is going to be epic. And I'm like, I highly doubt it. And I'm not saying that about universal, but that's my knee jerk reaction when anybody uses the word epic anymore is that I'm like, I don't know that we have a definition for the word epic currently that is true to its nature. I mean, it's uh, we still have plenty of epics. We have Homer's Odyssey. We have uh, the Iliad as well, too. We have uh, Beowulf. Those are all epics. Is Marge in that one? Uh, I don't believe so. No, just Lisa. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> no, I gotcha. I, it took me a little while there to figure it out. No, Large I, Marge is who I was referring to, but yeah, it's hope. fine. No, <laughs> just you're okay on that. Uh, no, I completely agree with you. It is not my favorite name. Uh, then again, Fantastic Worlds also wasn't my favorite name too i don't i don't know at the end of the day though it's let's let's really break it down here it's the name of a theme park it's it's what's about it inside and not actually the name itself i mean yeah it's we live in a day and age now where you know it's there are plenty of people out there who have not heard of universal orlando or maybe they haven't heard of walt disney world or they show no interest in it and so they might walk up to it and be like oh i this is stupid hypothetical no one's just gonna walk up to a theme park and be like oh 
that's the name for it. But let's say they hear about it. I don't think that the average person is going to care one way or another about an epic universe or Universal's epic universe. Well, you know, I'm one of those people that I also think I, I have a bad habit of just referring to everything as Universal Studios. And yeah. that's a park, not the one park. But, you know, growing up and seeing it all thing. And I bet there's a lot of people out there that do that, too. Oh, no, there there are a lot of people out there. Uh, I can say I hate every time I go through some of the uh, search terms on our website and stuff, and I still find Universal Studios Orlando scattered throughout everywhere, and that's that's the name of, like, Universal Orlando Resort. It's uh, Universal Studios is Universal Studios Florida, and just that. But uh, Universal's Epic Universe, did anyone in our uh, chat room there have anything interesting to say about the name? No. What's the general consensus, you'd say? Actually, it's about it's a little more divided than I thought it was going to be. There are some people who are saying, yeah, I don't agree. And then, you know, I am with people like Olora here who says it's a very trendy word, which is exactly what I was uh, trying to get out without saying the word trendy for some reason. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just kind of the kind of like whatever yeah. it's it seems it seems there's a level of kind of there's no I, sh- I shouldn't have started off with the word hate. I'm yeah. sorry. They, you were strong on that. I mean, it looks good when you uh, place it in a starry background, for sure. But, yeah, it's Universal's Epic Universe, nonetheless. So, uh, continue. Was this one of the names that was in that in the survey th- those years ago? Because Fantastic Worlds was. I, but I don't. I feel like I remember them. Something had the word epic in it. And I remember uh, being like, God, I hope it's not that. But, yeah. like, whatever, I, here we are. Yeah, I honestly, it's been such a long day, and I can't remember all of the back and forth on all the names that were trademarked and stuff. I thought Epic Universe was one of them, but uh, that most, if I can remember when that was announced, most people said that, oh, well, it's going to, that could be the name of, like, kind of a branding on the whole resort. Like, that it's was now me. a big Epic Universe. And I said that. Maybe, okay. I don't, I don't know. It, uh, whatever. Somebody, somebody in the chat has suggested Universal's lit universe. i would i would also like to see universal's tight universe (laughs) it's tight tight (laughs) which park are you going to today tight tight okay hate myself (laughs) yep i do too so uh let's continue on with all of this nonsense so this new uh area that's going to be added is set to add fourteen thousand jobs to central florida with a minimum base pay rate of $15 per hour. So that is going to be added on top of the 25,000 people that already are employed by Universal Orlando. So you know what? At least uh, giving back to giving back to Central Florida in a way. New, new theme parks, more people need to run it. It's going to be good for everyone around. So uh, let's, um, where do we want to go to next with this? I want to go to the just... size because the size matters to me. Yeah, well, the size is big on that, so uh, I don't think that made any sense where I, with what I just said right there. But the size is... How about where is it? Where is it, too? Okay, well, do you want to explain where it is there? No, because I'm actually confused. <laughs> I mean, I I live off of one of these streets, and that's why I'm like, hmm. It, it shows on the map. It'll show, like, Kirkman Road, and I live in that vicinity. And spoiler alert. I have said I live near Universal Studios before, but um, it's... It is a pretty straight shot from Universal property in from the current property into this new property. So um, two different ways. But I'm still I don't really know where that is. I don't know which. Sorry. I don't know which one of this big road is that's touching the top of it. I believe that road would be Sand Lake Road. The is, the yellow? Yeah, the one moving right across from Perpendicular there. That would to be it? Yes, yeah. that would be Sand Lake or Road parallel, I'm as I'm uh, I yeah. mean, for visually speaking, so Sand Lake Road is going to be the top border uh, on Epic Universe. Going down the left side of Epic Universe is going to be Kirkman, and then circling all the way down and right under is going to be Universal Boulevard. And uh, beyond that, uh, I believe right in this area where I'm circling here, uh, it's if you're listening again, this would be kind of to the bottom right of Epic Universe. This would be where that uh, that military institution is that every okay, now and then. Okay, that's what I was going to say. That's that curve right there. Yeah. Yeah, so that is... So this is kind of by, like, Point Orlando, like-ish in that realm of, like, if I were coming from Sand Lake and I was going past, like, I'd be passing I Drive and going toward the Florida Mall. I mean, yes and no in a way. I mean, I guess the best way to say that this is, like, just straight up in the heart of the International Drive area. 
uh, completely. So, you know, we're not too far away from Top Golf here. The convention center is kind of also right down below looking at it. Hmm. Um, it's it's right up in everything. And then all of the attractions that are you can see from right on I-4, those will all be to the, uh, if you're, you're kind of looking straight uh, from south to north, looking at the Universal Orlando Resort property, and and all those attractions would be on the left side. This would be on the right side. Okay. So uh, it's it's in an area where there's a bunch of fields and nothingness. So it is the uh, perfect space in a way for it. So oh, it's yeah. the the land that Universal sold off way way back when i think it was around 2003 and then they reacquired it through uh, all that process and had to they had to go through a, a headache full to to be able to actually uh really take this land and turn it into into this addition that they're turning into and i i'm, I'm gonna keep calling it that because my my gut instinct is to call this a theme park in a way because that's what that's how they're kind of describing it they're saying it's a theme park with an entertainment center hotels shopping and more but to me right now from the concept art it looks like a big theme park with a hotel right there so uh connected to it so until until uh there's more details on that i'm just gonna call it the addition to to save face on myself for that. So what these you're calling this this area the addition? I mean, I'm just, yeah, I'm just calling it the addition. I'm just leaving it uh, nice and and plain and basic on that. So uh, before we get into uh, all of the fun speculation aspects on it, we'll just have to uh, we'll just have to read some of the statements that they that was put out in because of this and you know one came from tom williams chairman and chief executive officer for universal parks and resorts he said our vision for epic universe is historic it will build on everything we have done and become the most immersive and innovative theme park we have ever created it's an investment in our business our industry and our team members and our community then chairman and uh, ceo of comcast like i said before brian l roberts said our new park represents the single largest investment comcast and NBC Universal has made in the theme park business and in Florida overall. It reflects the tremendous excitement we have for the future of our theme park business and for for our entire company's future in Florida. So, uh, and when you're talking about that, such a big investment and size in everything, just want to point out kind of Rhino was talking about the scope and scale as well as where it is. Uh, this entire land will be located within a large. 750 acre site that will nearly double universal's total available acreage when all is said and done that's insane so, yeah yeah oops that's Ooh, my that's computer. computer that's my computer reading hey. reading all the deets on that so uh for those of you not listening there was a lot of boobs <laughs> just kidding there were no boobs just mine um yeah i think it's insane that they good for them is all I'm going to say is they it's literally not just like a one park edition or whatever, you know, we're called, yeah. you, like you call it the edition. This is a, they're doubling their size. That is nothing to be like scoffed at at all. You know, whether we did not get a lot of details about what is actually happening or not. Can we talk about that now? Yeah, no, we can absolutely talk about that now. So essentially, uh, the the press conference that happened was very short you know our, our governor was flown down for it our mayor of orlando was there for it uh we were not there for it so we were not lucky enough to be among the list of those invited so uh we just had to follow along on on social media like everyone else did which i you know what i know it's one of those situations where it might hurt our relationship a little bit with universal but the, something about the fact that they let a bunch of journalists in the room and they just completely started off this entire announcement and they waited until the very end of the announcements that they made to finally release anything themselves but they let all these all these news outlets and bloggers and such make all these announcements for them it was kind of like why didn't this was an exciting thing. Everyone was sitting there waiting. Why didn't they live stream it themselves? Yeah. Why didn't they allow... I was disappointed by that. Yeah. Why, why didn't they allow the people that were there to just live stream it if they weren't going to do it themselves? The information was going to come out anyways. They were allowed to bring in cameras and film it. So it it really was like... 
it almost deflated the announcement in a way. And I hope I hope if they ever do something like this in the future again, that they understand like how important it would be in order to to have that real time uh, that real time reaction in there to it. So, so I, it, I I have a question about this because yeah. I, I know a lot of people are saying like, oh, this is their either counter their counter announcement to the opening of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge or the opening of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge that's about to happen here. I don't agree with that, but or that this is they're announcing now because they're getting ahead of the D23 announcements. Do you think we were given little to no details right now so that as that's going on, that can all happen, and then they'll immediately say, like, guess what? Here are the lands that go in here. I mean, I they definitely want to take their time with their announcements. Universal's typically very good about it. Uh, they usually wait until a while into the process to actually make a lot of these announcements. So... I, I can't I don't want to like put my foot in my mouth here because already from the start a uh, couple weeks back I said that I did not think that Universal would announce this park at all anytime before D23 Expo or no. after D23 Expo I don't think it had anything to do with Star Wars Galaxy's Edge I still don't think it has anything to do with Star Wars Galaxy's Edge I I just, uh, from what my perspective on it, as a person who follows this stuff, but also if I didn't follow it, Universal announced this park today, and there's a whole bunch of hubbub, and you know people are talking about it, people are excited. D23 Expo is going to come along, and at that point in time, we're already we're, we're three weeks away from that. Whatever, there, there's a lot of time to forget that Universal just announced this park, and so it just kind of seemed. It kind of seemed just random, if anything, in in my sense. And I know there's going to be people out there. I'm sure Pete would say it was it was a response to Galaxy's Edge, and it's to get in front of D23 Expo. But I just I think it's just they're building on the land, yeah. and they've got eventually people. You know how we live in a day and age where anybody, I mean, anybody could always do this, but the internet spreads it so fast. Anybody can look up a permit. In the second somebody, I think they just want to be ahead of somebody finally seeing a permit that says Epic Universe or something like that. And they just are like, all right, you know that we're doing this, so let's not beat around the bush. Here it is. Yeah. Like, well, and that, that that's part of it. Everyone knows it's there. The land's clear. They have the one weird palm tree that's sitting out in the middle of the field. Eventually, they're going to have to start uh, really getting into high gear with it and putting it all together. And because of that, we're going to start seeing construction. And you don't know what the pace is on it. You don't know what's going to come up first and such. But yeah, you're right. It's you got to you got to announce it and put it out there because pretty soon it's going to be visible to anyone and everyone, especially if you're willing to get in a helicopter. I am not. Uh, we'll let the experts who aren't afraid of riding in helicopters do that. Uh, it won't be me ever, but uh, it, I will never get in a helicopter yeah. and tell you that right now. <laughs> but uh, Unless it's, I'm getting yeah. airlifted to a hospital for some reason. And even then, you better be even really I, nervous. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I might just want to like reenact scenes from Heart and Souls, Robert Downey Jr. instead and just be like, I'm taking it to the spiritual yeah. world. Bye, everyone. I got you there. I got you there. But yeah, so it, it's going to be visible. And uh, you're right. It's it, I would say it's going to be a slow announcement of what the lands are going to be. Uh, however, for the most part, I would say it is pretty much set in stone with with the definites, uh, what we know is going to be there. So uh, it just based on the concept art, it all is kind of matching up with everything that that other websites were talking about before we had two separate people uh reach out to us anonymously and share information about uh stuff they heard and saw and everything that we can tell lines up with that and also that information lines up with some of the other sites out there have been reporting along a court and also uh one person who i consider to to basically be uh pretty much a a constantly write about everything but that's uh, alicia stella of uh, orlando park stop and basically the information she has revealed that she has heard matches up completely with ours so i would say it's uh it's pretty pretty much guaranteed of what's going to come it's just going to be when is universal actually going to announce it but so uh, we have these photos and stuff all over our our website uh for for anyone who's interested in seeing them who's listening to this but for those of you watching you're obviously going to see it all play out here so uh let's start looking at that concept art and talking about speculation of sorts all right so, i want to talk about before you break down like what we think the mm -hmm. lands are or anything like that 
let's look at where you're entering this park. I feel like that's really interesting to me. Okay. I can't spell the word guarantee. I'm sorry, chat. Um, so, okay. I need, I'm going to lean over here for a second. Oh, I'm going to move my fine. microphone because I'm, we're doing this together. Um, I got the, I got okay. the pointer here. So main entrance right here where Craig is currently yes. pointing. Cause that clearly looks like the entrance to a universal theme park right oh, there. It absolutely. Yes. They've taken the, uh, arch dynamic of it as well too. And, uh, so, you know, very similar to what we already have at universal studios, Florida, but slightly different enough. And you know, all this, all this area right here uh, that's just below the arch, uh, what you would approach before you get to the kind of the arch work here. It looks like it could be a good place for like ticket uh, locations. Uh, what what do you call them? Ticket booths. Turn, yeah. Could be turnstiles, we'll could booths, be yeah. ticket booths, yeah. could be anything in that nature, but uh, right there. So uh, where did you want to go to next? Well, Rhino? I hadn't seen this wider one until right now, yes. I don't think. Um, because originally, if could you enhance Sector 7C? Uh, I will enhance as we go along in each section, okay. but not right this now. This area on the left, originally, I thought, so. I thought when we get there, we'll look at it more, but I thought it was it looked like people were walking in and out of it so it kind of looked like it was another entrance to me and for those listening rhino is talking about the uh upper left. nintendo yeah, yeah the nintendo section in the upper left hand side uh yeah this was universal put out at first a uh, kind of a cropped uh, piece of artwork and then scott gustin on twitter put out a a much wider version of it that uh, shows off a lot more in the bottom it yeah the full track more of, of this thing and yeah, yeah more of the entry gate more track of the uh roller coaster that appears to be a dueling roller coaster and the the one land in the kind of bottom right that would be like a we believe how to train your dragon but <laughs> um, well, I haven't seen the movie. I shouldn't blow out that. I just blow that up. I feel like it's a weird choice to use a property that's already over and done with, but whatever. Yeah. That's not... Oh. Not, ooh, little, little guy ran away. Um, I find this interesting, this area up in the upper right-hand corner behind the fireworks to be intriguing to me. I know it might not be anything, but if you look at that, it looks like that's a lot of water right there, and that could just be the end of the land and where it goes. But to me, if you follow along the where that that those buildings are going, it looks like this is a dock. So, Rhino, I think your eyesight me might I be also, terrible. No, I don't. I don't see water on it. This Maybe is water right here. That's all water. This is all water right here. I studied cartography. No, I'm pretty sure that is all the, of the uh, green area is water, I'm, and all of the blue area is land. I'm pretty sure this is the show buildings, kind of like they show. This is a show building here. <laughs> okay, in the lower res version, it looks like it's a lake, and no one look at Instagram anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, okay. this is what happens when you don't talk. Not only is it higher res, well, not only is it wider, it's higher resolution. So originally, it only like kind of went up to right here, so you couldn't see this little area, and that clearly is gray now that I'm looking at it. Okay, well, uh, if anyone out there thinks that Rhino needs to get his eyes checked, please uh, let him know. It doesn't uh, help being like colorblind a little bit too. Yeah. So great. Oi, yeah, you struggled on that. So uh, that section that Rhino was uh, insinuating on, I guess we'll just go through it all now before we really break it down. Right now, uh, that's. A, Everyone speculating that that section will be the Wizarding World of Harry Potter section. Uh, opposite to that, on the upper left-hand corner, where there's an amphitheater at, that is uh, the current speculation. To that is going towards uh, dark uh, classic monsters. Sorry, I almost wanted to say dark universe. The dark universe is dead, but classic monsters can still exist there. And then uh, at the very opposite end of where the park entrance would be, you would have a hotel of a massive sorts. Hotel. So a Looks big hotel that, I mean, you want that theme park view in a way. Well, I if, think, the, if they're going to do what I'm assuming all these fireworks in the sky is, there will be nighttime firework shows here. And imagine, you know, you're... I, I, I can't imagine how cool it's going to be to be there and watch all that happen. You know? See, this is something that I didn't really want to speculate on with the with the fireworks in that. I look at it as well. It's a theme Just park a celebration, of course. Well, it's a theme park, of course. They want they want to have some sort of nighttime spectacular in a way to kind of be the icing on the cake at the end of the day. Uh, you know, Islands of Adventure kind of has theirs now with the the 
everything that happens on the the Wizarding World of Harry Potter's Hogwarts Castle. You know the whether it's the the Christmas version, the the House Pride version, or once the Dark Arts one uh, makes it here. You know you have all of those. It's it's you, that's kind of your nighttime spectacular there. And then back in Universal Studios Florida, of course, we have. We have the the fountain uh, the fountain lagoon show there with some pyro. So um, it's a theme park. There's going to be something nighttime related, but in terms of like the concept art, I, I don't know if that's more or less to just make it look like Jazzy. epic, yeah, epic and big. So something will be there. What size it is, what the scope, I'm not sure, but uh, there very is a lot interesting of water. Oh yes, there is, and uh, there there's a ton of water throughout there. And I mean, I, I, I know that, I mean, think about it. Universal Studios uh, has a lagoon, and so, and Islands of Adventure is built around a waterway. Yeah. Why wouldn't this one be as well? But yeah, so, and uh, here is a little bit, uh, again, for only if you're watching, if you're listening, go on our website to look at the concept art and the photos. But uh, here's a look at the, some of the water features that Rhino was kind of discussing. Tons and tons of. Uh, tons and tons of water all around. I, I thought myself to be clever when I said every time Disney gets rid of a fountain, Universal adds a new one. And I thought this was their ode to Waterworld. <laughs> also their ode to Waterworld there. But uh, the entire kind Mariner's of... Mariner's Marina. What's that? <laughs> Mariner's Marina. <laughs> yeah, that that's a good one. Uh, but this entire like middle section, to me, uh, this is... This is very, very interesting. Like, and almost the most interesting aspect of yeah. all of this. One of the... Uh, so, just to break it down with you, I told you that we received um, information. This was back in, like, December, and then before that, it was November of 2018. Uh, the first person sent us a long list of stuff to expect, including uh, including... Uh, Wizarding World of Harry Potter section, mm -hmm. Super Nintendo World, uh, Classic Monster section, How to Train Your Dragon. And then the last thing he said, I don't remember if we've talked about it on the show before, was I think we did one time. We did a show on speculation. Uh, he called it a Celestial Gardens slash kind of like with Greek and Roman architecture on that. The following person who uh, kind of gave us information on what we might expect to also talked about it being uh they talked about the four lands but not mentioning the celestial gardens per se and it, you know it, at first i was like i don't know if that's gonna make sense with it but then when you start seeing whoa there's puppy. dogs in this house just <laughs> so everyone knows <laughs> got a puppy alert there then when you start seeing buildings uh in the concept yeah. art that look like it's coming straight out of like a uh, this looks like space. astronomers yeah. type uh, thing, I get the celestial aspect of it then. So I don't mm, know. Yeah, I don't know ultimately what they're going to kind of call the the middle shared ground areas, but I definitely, Can I definitely get see a celestial level to it. Even oh, we'll get there. Even looking at like the the well, hotel, it kind yeah. of has that. Or about front end. The hotel in general, just, I, I know it's concept art. It's always going to look different. I know, different, but that but main spire there with the blue is yeah. like, that's pretty. No, I mean, it, that looks like it could be something really pretty. Yeah. So I don't know if it's just me taking stuff that we've heard and trying to make it uh, fit go into. Back, go back to the hotel. Go back to the hotel. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Back there. Is, I find it interesting, too, that the, the sides are very distinctively different from the inner part. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know no, I, but it's but they all it also all kind of looks castle like in structure too, which is interesting. Yeah, well, it was well, see, I see castle, but then I also see with like this part here specifically, I see like uh, Greek columns in a way mm -hmm. from that, mm -hmm. and okay, it's that, all yeah. very, very interesting, yeah, in, in terms of the design with it. So, uh, it's regardless of what it is, and we're two lunatics who have no authority on saying whether or not it should be uh, what it should be. Uh, it, it definitely looks pretty. And even kind of looking here closer at the main entrance, once again, like all the groundwork here. Oh, yeah, yeah. To me, that's, I, I don't know what celestial means, but I could see that. I could see this that. being, yeah. I, I, I would say more like astronomical in a way. It reminds me of like uh, astronomers' clocks and mm -hmm. such with the designs and 
Oh, if all but this that, glass work ends up being yeah, I hope it actually does, there. Aaron. That's beautiful. But then some of this even looks like Thorish in a way. Like well, it looks like yeah, it looks like Asgard yeah. kind of like the Rainbow <laughs> Bridge, like yeah. going up to that area. It it it's it and it yeah, I can I can see what you're saying, and that definitely derives from that really old uh, that old. Uh, I guess celestial is the word. Celestial, like um, <laughs> let's let's beat it to death on this one. For everyone at home, start drinking wh- every time. I, yeah, I know, that's how we're at this week. I I don't know what those instruments are called that are the, like the circles with the loops and they point up at the sky and the thing. And dear God, I hope no one is like. I can't even remember what it's called now. What's the thing you go in when you're in high school with stars on the ceiling? I do, you, we have a bunch of people watching live right now. Why wouldn't you just ask them these questions instead of putting no me on No one has answered yet. They're all talking about Craig. What about me? I don't know. They just said, oh, Craig. Just one person. Um, <laughs> Neptune Poseidon vibe is what Katie in the castle says. And now someone wants an Asgard theme park. Everyone's Atlantis seems to be keep coming mm-hmm, up a bunch mm-hmm. in here, and I can see that for sure. The lost city of Atlanta. Yeah. In California, there's a whole building dedicated to this thing I'm talking about with the telescope that points at the sky. Planetarium. Oh, are you talking Good about, Lord. yeah, the that observatory the and planetarium? Yeah, an observatory yeah. and planetarium with the words I was looking for. Those are not the instruments I'm referring to, though. Yeah. No, I know I know what you're going at for there. So Everyone helped uh, me now, though. Thank you. Three yeah. minutes later, there must be a delay. <laughs> like, oh, you yeah, know, there's, you, there's absolutely a delay, but yeah. we got there. But regardless, uh, you know, it's it, this entire middle area section is absolutely beautiful and stunning. We can tell, like, the one thing. Uh, the one big one. Oh, there you go. Like we know, there's going to be an awesome fountain there. Yeah, we that know there's cool. plenty of water. I don't know what's in like this this one building here that basically looks like a. I hope it's a restaurant, a sextant. <laughs> well, it's that's what it's kind called. of funny. Not okay. the restaurant. Yeah. Oh, the thing I was t- referring to. Uh, disturbed va- vapor said it, but. Oh. I th- it's been blocked as a comment. He, they think it's inappropriate on the chat. But <laughs> See, and I thought I was about to be inappropriate saying that this one building, because of the top of it, looks like a uh, a lady's um, upper oh. part. It does to me. I'm I'm just gonna. I'll be bold. It, I'll be honest. I'll say it. It. It, it looks like a boob. <laughs> it looks like the mold of like a cake. I don't know. I, I think it looks very pretty though. Yeah. And now it's all I can see. I hope you're yeah. happy with That's yourself. That's all you can <laughs> see there. Uh, then you have these. Oh no! Wait, these up. two. Two of them. Yeah. Wait, where are you seeing the? Oh, yeah. See, right here. That's one. And those guys are. Oh no! See, oh, you were talking about the full picture here. I was talking yeah. specifically Put about those this goggles one. on. <laughs> I was talking specifically this one building, but you're looking at the big. I'm looking at the big picture. The big picture there, and then there's this one building here that looks like a choo choo, not a choo choo onion, but just a choo choo. Just so, a choo choo, yeah. Yeah, Ooh. that there. Then this building up here intrigues me on Gosh, what it is. There's so much more buildings, and I even like kind of. You I know what those those, those ones that you're, that you're referencing yeah. up there? They kind of look like the um from Men in Black, uh, the structure of the building from the World's Fair. Yeah, well, except those are already at Universal Studios Florida, so I'm going to assume that that just happens to be uh, because they're circles, circles that you're saying that. And you... If I know one thing, it shapes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, the, the, the confusion even comes back to, like, this building here. This looks like an old-fashioned kind of... Uh, it looks like an old-fashioned kind of... Uh, I don't know if it's going to be a ride. It looks like a pavilion of sorts. Kind like, of a gazebo. Yeah, a gazebo. So all very interesting but in this middle. It's area. interesting because, like, so, if, you know, concept art sometimes is hard to, you know, the yeah. rendering makes some things look amazingly huge and other things look small. The bridge, the bridge that's right behind this gazebo looking structure looks to have another small fountain in the middle of it. Yeah. So it, it leads me to believe, like, I mean, I'm sure this isn't going to be, like, I, I don't know, actually, but it's kind of interesting how small that is. Like, if that's a reference to the size of that other thing, oh. or if this is just, you know, they're like, oh, we don't. Oh, it's, yeah, that's, it's, see, I know we're spending a long time talking about this one portion, but this is the stuff that intrigues me. Like, this building uh, that is right up above, like, the gazebo ish area, while it looks like it might con- be connected to Super Nintendo World in a way, it hmm. also looks like it has its own entrance here. Well, so that's, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Is this part of what they would consider these entertainment facilities because it's not in one of the actual lands you, you, it's remember, just yeah it's like this is just an entirely different type of concept that but i want people to, to pay yet. attention to this this part because i want to bring this up later is you need to pay attention to where the entrance is to if this is nintendo that's an entrance this right there portal right here but look how it's a portal like that's the one way you go into that okay 
I think that's important because I have a theory about this whole thing. He's got a theory. He might be wrong. He might be right. Regardless, he's going to share it. Yeah. And you're going to have to put up with that. So let's go ahead and start breaking down the different lands. And the first one we're going to go to is the one I think everyone is most excited for. It would be after you come through, if we're if we're right on what the entrance is, you come through, you move to your left, past gazebos and such, and... <laughs> It's going to be my inside joke. Everywhere we show up on opening day, look, look at that gazebo. Gosh, that's, that's a beautiful, beautiful gazebo. gazebo. Yeah. <laughs> I could uh, read a book in there. Yeah, you absolutely <laughs> could. Uh, first land we're going to talk about, they tried to make it abstract based on the uh, artwork, but it seems like it pretty much has to be yeah. Super Nintendo I mean, World based on the s- other. Stacking of the blocks kind of over yeah, there. It, it's definitely obscured in a way, but it it just has to be that. I, I get that they wouldn't want to give it all away since they haven't, since they don't want to announce exactly where it is, but uh, based on, like, some... I know other sites have published leak photos on of the models of Super Nintendo World. Uh, it's it's photos that were also given to us. We just didn't publish them because, well, we, we try not to do that when at all possible, but... Uh, just just based on what those models look like, the same style of uh, multi dimensions in terms of up and down. Uh, it, this has height to it. It looks like it looks like this could very well actually be the land. And in the first portion that you would come into uh, would be the the Super Nintendo mm-hmm. world, like the, specifically the Super Mario Brothers portion of it. And then back behind it, this area back there, that's what I would most likely assume would be the Donkey Kong yeah, the, Country area. That, yeah, that attraction looks like the yeah. Broken Bridge. Yeah. Uh, like the concept, uh, not the concept, the patents we saw filed. Yeah, instead. the patents we saw filed kind of with the mine cart. And then on the, the, on the models that were shown off the leaked the leaked mm-hmm. concepts of the models uh they definitely had a roller coaster track in there so that would definitely lead it to being that so uh nice nice big area there for plenty of super nintendo and then also plenty of other green space around that you think i that... assume could uh lead to expansions in the future joe yeah true so. you think that giant building is like um, a Mario Kart attraction I would, or a, a Nintendo themed attraction. Yeah, I would believe that the building that is right there would be in fact for the Mario Kart attraction. Um, if I'm, you know, based on what, what other people have kind of shared in the past about it and such, I would assume that this is where Mario Kart's going to be. I don't know if we're getting the Yoshi, uh, the Yoshi, um, it's a, like a dark ride version of it, a uh, kind of, a, a slow, moving yoshi ride what if yeah it was on one of the concept models i'm not sure oh, if we're actually going to get goodness. it or if you it get might have been ride, the concept artwork if you get to ride yoshi yeah. i might just pass away in this land and that that would be bad but uh so i feel like based on the concept art of this that would line up with that and then of course restaurant shops would all be located in here and donkey kong country definitely looks like we have a roller coaster of sorts in there so it all just kind of checks uh, out in a way says they can see this crashed plane is that is that what you think that is oh um where's the somebody in the chat said it says i see the crash plane oh right here yeah yeah right there so that's no that would much, definitely yeah, yeah that would and that's the and hut even like the huts, look like yeah, yeah. The, the huts have the same feel to it and it's definitely and those if those aren't mine carts two mine carts side by side or front to back then I don't know what that is. That would be the world's smallest uh, attraction vehicle in the world there. But just looking at it, it kind of checks out in a way. So, uh, And then here's the closer look there at at what would most likely be the, you know, the, the Super Mario Brothers portion of it. But just looks like it's obscured enough that everyone still has to speculate a little bit on what it might be, even though it's... Uh, it, it, is almost 100 percent exactly what it is so moving on the next section we're going to talk about is the one that would be uh if we're going i guess that would be clock that would be clockwise as i have to do circles in front of me here to figure it out anytime someone says i have to stop and try it out too i'm like yes (laughs) so moving clockwise clockwise around the next area that we would get to uh would be what is what has been told is the uh 
the the classic monster section based on what everyone's kind yeah. of predicting on that and you know, i thought i thought when i first saw it i was like oh pot it's clearly an old like that village aesthetic like hogsmeade and i was like oh this is gonna be another pot area but then yeah yep oh. if this is the the monsters area this looks cool yeah i'll be honest with you i was kind of at first i was the same way and then once uh once alicia stella put her uh, speculation map i mean i call it a speculation map because of course this is here anything can change in the future hopefully we get through this before yeah, the storms come there is thunder yeah. happening right meow we'll get through it though uh as long like once she pointed out that that would be the classic monsters according to what she's heard that makes complete sense to me it does have that old rustic village vibe that you get from classic dracula frankenstein that old old village sort to it but based beyond that there's it's really hard to tell like what all encompasses that area but uh i think this area in the back is really interesting though this giant looking stadium yeah it's a it's definitely a pavilion stadium and i don't i don't know what well my guess is there but well my guess is they're gonna do something I, i it's interesting that it's in the back of monsters so it would be monsters related are they gonna revive the chamber the junkyard jamboree no that's yeah. a different thing what the Beetle heck is it called is graveyard, graveyard for you yeah it it's I, but it, it looks like this could be i'm assuming since they're in two different places maybe they're building an arena area here that they could also do some sort of performances or special events at like they do at universal studios yeah. i i again i don't know i didn't hear anything about any uh pavilion theater seating going in there so for me it was a surprise seeing it on there. I'm not even going to begin to speculate on if it has anything to do with that land that it is kind of connected to or if there's a separate path that would lead to it. It just happens to be there, but uh, it it is there nonetheless, and it's it's right beside what, what could be this classic monster section. And then, like I pointed out earlier, that weird building that Rhino Some, believes. Somebody says in chat, if that does end up actually being a Potter-themed area, which I know pretty much at this point it's we think it's monsters, but they were suggesting it could be the Quidditch Stadium. I did actually, yeah, you're right. I, I saw one other person say something along those lines too. And I guess I could kind of also see that. I don't, it would be very interesting for them to take that kind of concept with it, but yeah, I, you know, I, I'm open for anything. Yeah, yeah. With this park, uh, you know what? Blow me away. Please. Just do that. <laughs> so, yeah. So let's move on to the next section here. This is the, uh, the crazy section that, again, Alicia Stella pointed out that she would believe this would be the uh, Wizarding World yeah, portion of it. And I could definitely buy into that as well, too. Uh, just based on the architecture alone, you're talking it could be multiple different locations. It could be yeah. it could be kind of Parisian in a way. It could be a little bit Londonish, I guess. It, I, it whatever could be broad New York. Whatever city, yeah, whatever cities yeah. they're going to visit in these movies, like each one of these alleys could kind of yeah. be different versions of it. Well, and that's if it is fantastic if it's fantastic beasts then you would have to assume that this this entire street in this way is going to be either uh paris where you would get to their uh their area that you explore in the the one um which what crimes of grindelwald that was the second one right yeah yeah and then uh it yeah, because the first one was just Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Or it could even be some sort of New Yorkish type location for uh, for Fantastic Beasts, just in general, since since we have New York in that sense. If it could be London, it could be Ministry of Magic, because that was a huge rumor way, way, yeah. way back when. But, I, you know, it, that still makes more sense to me being the location to that being right next to Diagon Alley. If they ever were to get rid of Fear Factor one day, I know oh, that somebody just said in a chat in the chat here, um, it's universe because you're visiting different universes and not lands. Hence, the in between parts are celestial because you're going in and out of the universes. Uh, why did they take that long to finally point it out? I, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was Lazaro Fernandez said that. I, I'm like, oh, okay, that actually makes sense. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, now I feel stupid. We talked so long about that yeah. and didn't ever put any connection there together. I, I do respect them, though, for th- tying that theming right into the land like that very aggressively. Yeah. And yeah. that's if 
if that is what they were going for there. Yeah. If not, uh, I believe he needs to get a job uh, thinking up the, these yeah, kind yeah. of creations because that's that's good stuff there. That's real good stuff. But uh, I guess then the next portion going along with this is maybe it's from a location in the Fantastic Beast movie that we just haven't even seen yet. Oh, that's, that yeah, they that's know true. is yeah. coming. And that's part of why they're keeping uh, they're keeping quiet about it. That could also be a thing. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, they do have that that cooperation directly with Universal where they're they're working alongside each other to make these authentic and and relevant in a way. So it could be that. But interesting stuff. And then uh, let's move on to the the last land. So we're coming full uh, full clockwise all the way back down to the 30 mark on there the half mark on there and we have what uh what is generally be considered to be considered the uh the how to train your dragon section in a way and the artwork doesn't really convey that in my opinion uh but it does if you are going with what the the four things everyone was was hearing and what we were even told on it it just kind of has to be this well, it's section. interesting because there are a lot of attractions in this concept art here because you've got the boat the boat area yeah then if you look closely there is a second roller coaster right here going through there's like a track right there yes and, yeah and right you're talking in this kind of area yeah, like right, right here, here. yeah there's, there's this little uh, section here. You were also mentioning that boat area kind of to the left of that. Uh, it's a lot of water in here. I could definitely, I mean, this to me would stick out as, even though I think Nintendo would be a very good uh, zone for both kids and adults, I feel like this one would definitely appeal more directly to to kids in general. So I kind of I kind of get that feeling from this concept art that it's a little bit more is, playful and whimsical. Is there a lot of water in those movies? I haven't seen them. Uh, I mean, yeah, they they live on. They either do they live on an island or do they live right next to the coast? But essentially, they there is a lot of okay. water in it. They they are flying over the water and such. It's not this concept art doesn't convey anything to what the movies look like. But again we're pretty confident on super nintendo being in that area that we said but that concept art doesn't match what we've seen from the models and other artwork yeah. on it so i think it's just trying to be disguised just enough to keep keep the so, questions yeah. around if it's how to train your dragon do you think this is a new version of dueling dragons well see my original uh idea on that when when that did come about is i i looked at that concept art and the first thing i said was wow if they if they use that kind of in the same style of what hagrid's is kind of a low to the ground coaster that's yeah. weaving in and out that could be really cool in terms of how to train your dragon as well as the fact that if there's two tracks side by side like that it is a dueling aspect mm-hmm. into it and then like in the concept artwork it's just like clever that it's like a reddish orange and then the blue and that would just, harken back yeah to dueling dragons uh an homage yeah to colors however i thought all of that and then again since she is an authority on a lot of these rumors and speculation alicia stella came out and said that this roller coaster here is completely separate oh, from yeah, anything some, somebody in, in how chat to train just said dragons. that too they think it's so, a completely separate area yeah, which interesting i could understand that also being the case there so while i could definitely why do i keep screwing up like that well i could <gasps> definitely okay wait a tie minute into it can you go to the other one what's this thing next to it do we we don't know what that okay you want i was thinking this could be the chimney the chimney going through the chimneys the flu network no. but it, it would it would doesn't make sense then because yeah, no. it's too far away from the other area we got that Whoa. maybe maybe oh. it ties into that other um spaceship looking building yeah. I, I yeah this this is where i'm kind of lost at in the high it's blue and orange in the front there too. It's interesting. Yeah, no, it's very interesting with the with definitely where this roller coaster building is here. It's yeah. uh it's very very intriguing on that. And the high concept, the well, high resolution concept art, you can definitely get a little more details out of this this area that is being speculated to be like how to train your dragon or mm-hmm. whatever. Um it's you know, maybe maybe it's that, maybe it's also adding in other other DreamWorks as well too, and it's a greater DreamWorks area. I don't know, but it's it all looks beautiful. Yeah. So oh, yeah, it, there's a lot. I mean, the, the I mean, you, I don't know if you said this before we started recording at the beginning, but that this concept art that they've shown us isn't even the thing that occupies the entire plot of land that they showed, right? 
Um, or they haven't been specific about it. Yeah, I don't. I genuinely don't remember what we've said now at this point. I'm just kind of like lost on everything that we've said. We've said so much here while also saying so little. But I, uh, it's they they have said hotels. So that that's one concept I'll say right there. They've said hotels from the concept artwork. There's, in my opinion, there's only one clear thing that would point to to a hotel. And then in terms of them calling this a, a theme park or kind of a, a bigger, I don't know, I don't know the because they keep saying it's, okay they say it's a theme park with an entertainment center with shops with hotels. So to me, that's where it kind of sounds like the general property as a whole will be a blend of like, let's take universal city walk and, and a theme park and smash them together. But then you brought up the idea with that yeah. is if you do that, how do you then control, how do you control the aspect of, well, if you want to visit this sh- hotels and shopping and entertainment, there has to be a, an easy way to access it. So, so. I, that's what I think. That's why I'm, I, I think it's interesting to pay attention to the entrances to all of these lands. You know, somebody, it's been brought up in the chat how a lot of these places look like they're one way in, one way out. And I'm like, well, yeah, so isn't each one of the theme parks we already have in existence everywhere. And um, So I am thinking you go in and you have your ticket or annual pass, whatever it may be, and you you there's a turnstile at the entrance of every one of these lands, and they operate essentially as micro parks. And that that's a bold concept. I'm it that gets you because think about it. Then it then it takes out that aspect of walking in between the lands, and you keep going in and out of either this dining district or shopping district or whatever. But I mean, think about the setup of think about what we say all the time on on the Universal show. We always say, "Why would you eat in this place when you can go to City Walk and have this whole other experience, mm-hmm. and then go back into the park?" I feel like this could be their way of being like, "Okay, well, instead of competing with you know other parks or whatever, why don't we try something completely different?" Yeah, I mean, you came up with a very very bold concept that I enjoy, that I like the sound of. I'm not sure if that's the method because the only reason why I would lean towards that not being it is because what if, you know, let's say the attendance for it on a busy day, mm-hmm. I, it's not even technically that busy, but let's say it's 25,000 people that want to to visit this area. And what if 10,000 of them all try to get into like the Nintendo section at once? That's just that's too many people yeah, trying that, to get into one area. That's the same way. That's the same thing that happens at the park already. Yes, in a way. But when you have, you know, it's <laughs> when you're when everyone's in the park. Yes, they can then move about the different lands with this. But with the concept of one way in and one way out, if you have to go through a turnstile every time you want to enter a new land, that means there's going to be lines to get into each but of But it also means they can regulate how many people are inside of those areas a lot better than they currently do. Yeah, but then you also, the other part of it that doesn't sit with me there as as a concept is that, you know, I would err towards saying that the, the Super Nintendo World section as well as as uh, the Wizarding World section are guaranteed hits. Oh, and so you're, why would you even walk into the other ones? You go to sometimes you're at a theme park yeah. and you go to the things that you normally you as an individual might not care about because you're there and it's in the in between. Yeah. So it's uh, I would still say well it's a very cool concept and something I could definitely see uh, Universal try. I'm not necessarily Universal, but some theme park place trying. I mean it's because it, it's not. As a concept, it's not out of the realm. It's the exact same thing as, okay, you have Disneyland Park and you have Disney California Adventure where they're located. They're kind of next to each other. And then you have you have downtown Disney in between. So you have this free area where you can roam up and down with dining and shopping and hotels and such. But then you also have these two parks. But this this would be more like okay you have this one giant area and then you have separate lands that you could enter into it just seems messy and with stuff like the the roller coaster if that's not a part of that area that is that's right below it then what where is that what is part of that so 
Well, that's... and maybe it comes out to like the type of ticket too. Maybe they charge you based on what you want to experience. You only want to go to Nintendo. That's your ticket. You want to experience two two of these universes. That's the ticket. You know, I would I would not like to see that. I would like one ticket. I look at it as one ticket going in and out, and that's what gets you. It's like a ride in the subway or something. Yeah. I ultimately, I think overall, this is going to be essentially universal once again. Uh, getting the best of us when they are this is their fourth theme park because volcano bay is a water theme park Mm -hmm. so this is this is their fourth theme park that just happens to include the hotels shopping etc there will obviously be shopping in the park as well as in the hotel there's restaurants in the hotel and in the park uh they've said more to me you know i i think if they do have if some people out there have said that overall they feel like there's enough for two full parks in this area, plus even extra hotels on top of that. If Maybe this is just step one of the entire plan. It's this park, and then they'll add more hotels. They'll add a city walk, maybe a second second park in this campus later on. I I just feel like what they announced today with Universal's, with Universal's Epic Universe it's we're seeing a theme park with one hotel and if they're going to add more they'll update concept artwork as it goes but what we're seeing is our park and it's a pretty park i don't know if it'll translate once it's in the the real world environment but it's exciting it it has me it, it literally kind of it's just looking at it it's like this feels so different to anything else at universal even kind of in the the area around it it has feels like it has these nods and touches to like epcot at its best but also it, it's lush it's it's interesting it's unique and oh, celestial it's definitely unique yeah and i really love that idea of oh it's all celestial because we're in the universe and you're moving around to these other universes that guy is a smart person yeah or whoever came up with that idea it was or, guy, again once again it's that could be made up it might not be the celestial gardens we might have just been given false information and all that but i'm I'm excited for it oh yeah so. I, I don't care what the name is i'm very excited for it yeah so uh i guess other people out there you know twitter as a whole i think alicia stella also put it out there and other people uh it's expecting this maybe around like 2023 so four years away i don't I feel like that's pretty quick it's it's quick, but it's also not. It doesn't seem unreal, but it also seems like yeah, that's well, that's long, a good plan. But if it goes longer, then I how, could also see that happening. Well, how long did it take to build like just just Diagon Alley or just or even like I know it's not the same thing, but Galaxy's Edge, Star Wars. How long was that? That's the only thing I can think of in my time here that has been completely leveled and built. Yeah, I mean, well. Diagon Alley didn't take that long, so that would have closed. It was like a year and a half, I feel like two years. Yeah, that would have that closed when I was still at Universal. So when did I leave Universal? I left Universal in 2012, so that would have been 2011 that it closed, and then it was open in 2014. So not that many years in there for that section, but they also had a lot. It was it was this big body of water there before with all the jaws and stuff so i guess but they're uh, about to create a big body of water and yeah i mean it's it's interesting i mean they're going to be employing quite a bit of people to build this but then you have something on the opposite side you have the how incredibly quick it took to get uh to get hagrid's open from closing down that's true uh, closing down dragon challenge even though they reused a lot of like the the building and such for that but in terms of the ride track and getting it all up, you know, they, they were able to turn that around quick, too. So, do you, I mean, this we just play around with this idea, but do you think they'll open this in phases or all at once? What do you mean, phases? Like, do you think the hotel will be ready to go first before anything else? Do you think the hotel will be the last thing to go? Do you think they'll be like, okay, well, the left side of the park is ready to be open, but not the right side of the park? The park will open. I you know this concept art will be 100 percent complete when it opens it's the only thing i hate about this job because you know i don't i don't we've been doing this for a long time and we definitely we definitely get some stuff correct in our our thoughts and feelings moving ahead of time and other stuff we get completely wrong i for a theme park i would never open up a theme park that's not 
you know, I, I stuff I mean, inside. Look at John Hammond. Look what happened yeah, to him. Stuff can be like not fully ready to go when you're inside, but the majority should be ready. If you're going to charge people full price to go in, I mean, the here, majority of it should be ready. Well, well, we've been in a theme park that opened that wasn't ready once, so it's not unheard of. I'm just thinking. What it, are you saying? Which which one? Remember when we went to Volcano Bay? No, Volcano Bay was. We went during a media preview and it had its struggles to get open but the majority of the park was ready to go that's true the majority of it so i think as long as the majority is 100 percent ready to go hey, they feel like the they sooner can deliver. the better that's all yeah. i say too i it, don't care i yeah. want this asap i'm not gonna live in florida forever yeah i i could see the hotel opening up first though the way you said it uh, there has to be an exterior entrance to the hotel of course you'll be able to get into the park from the hotel but you have to be able to, you can't just get to your hotel by walking through the entire park. So I could see the hotel opening up first and maybe for like, maybe for a couple weeks or so, you get kind of a sneak peek oh, yeah. at can, the park. If you look at the concept art again, you can, if you look really carefully in the wide one, you can see that road. See yeah. That, is, is a road. I, I was thinking this was the front and you only entered there. And I think in those were access roads. And now I'm thinking, oh, well, that's probably where you come in the hotel. Yeah. Yeah, so, Never mind. I'm an idiot. Nah, you you do your best you do your best when you can do your best so yeah i'm regardless of what happens with it i'm excited it looks like based on the concept art uh they are also leaving themselves plenty of room for expansion in the future if they if they feel they need to expand on it or or what in terms of just that that one park area in there so uh, i'm i'm excited that's all I, I know, and that's all I can say about that. And I cannot wait for wait for this all to become a reality for sure. So, uh, Rhino, do you have any final thoughts on it? Yeah, I, I did want to comment because the I forget who it was. Somebody said, um, and then somebody just brought it up in the chat, so I remembered. But the they commented on it would give you know however many jobs in Orlando. But then that they said when it opened, the base rate would be fifteen dollars an hour. And I want to be like, do you want a pat on the back for that? Because Let's assume it takes four years. You like, how do we know in four years that that's going to be okay, and that's not going to be the base minimum wage in the entire United States or something yeah. like that? You know, I. It's one of those weird things that they said that so confidently that I was like, "What does that matter right now?" I don't know if they were trying to like nip, like poke at somebody else or something, but yeah. I just, I, I think that's a weird thing to say right now, especially when you don't even know what, we don't even know what economy or like what the job situation yeah. is going to be by then. I mean, uh, it sounds great right now in 20, what year is it? 19? 19. I almost said 17. It sounds great in 2017. Would have been amazing in 2017. Yeah. Would have, would have been great in 2015 too, but we're here. Uh, did anyone else have any questions that you thought or any comments to bring up? Any corrections uh, along the way for us? Um, I, not really. There's just been a lot of people like guessing. Somebody brought up, they were saying there's a Battlestar Galactica roller coaster in Singapore, I think. So they were like, do you think that's what the roller coaster could be? I, you know, about probably seven years ago, I would have been like, oh, that would be cool. But that show has not been on for quite some time now. So, um, but no, it's just been a lot of, uh, speculating along with us and, um, you know, some people asking questions that we obviously don't know. Nobody knows when this is going to open. We already answered that. Um, but you guys are excited. Yeah. We're excited. Excellent. So uh, because of the odd nature of this and being live, uh, that's that's pretty much where we're going to end this off. We're not going to have uh, our, our typical uh, questions that we do at the end of the episode here just because uh, I don't have any of them ready and such but we will oh people what? i mean i uh, guess man. this is the other answer sorry nah. sorry um the uh, a lot of people have been like what what are they going to do to get you from one park to another from one campus to another oh, you know are you. they going to build a monorail system are they going to build a thing and here's the thing we live here and Universal has no control over these roadways like that. The thing with Disney and the way, reason why they can build a Skyliner or a monorail or whatever they do is because they own all of that land. It's their land. And you unfortunately have to cross like actual like highways and stuff to get to this area. It's going to be buses. Yeah. Well, so, yes, I agree with you on that. We know uh, based on when they were talking to us about uh, Universal's Endless Summer Resort, 
uh, they they flat out told us when they first were really going on about that and getting the hype train on that mm-hmm. that oh, you know we've looked at many different ways to get people from the main campus to endless summer including including special uh, special driveways even they said back then like oh we even looked at building a waterway of sorts in order to to be able to get over there so they've definitely thought a lot about how to get people back and forth I believe it was Tom Williams who said during the press conference if i'm remembering correctly that they said it would be about an average of 12 minutes to get back and forth between the two properties uh they also part of the reason why uh, our mayor there jerry demings was was on hand was to also talk about kind of the infrastructure that's going into this and the fact that universal is in comcast nbc universal is paying whoa not happy about that one mm-hmm. uh they're paying to to put this money into the infrastructure and roadways and sorts Good for them yeah and uh I'll, good yeah sweet we've got some <laughs> yeah they're there's we're just gonna this is you, yeah you, 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 i feel like this is a scene in austin powers yeah. where it's just God. <laughs> uh yeah they're they're I, scotty this, don't yeah these are the things i don't even know if it's picking up i'm sure it is but uh if it's not we just sound crazy here but yeah this is you know universal putting money into making these roadways uh be more accessible between the two i don't i don't even know if it's out of the realm of possibility that they can they can finance and pay for a road that is only to be used to go back and forth between these two areas with with their buses um i mean that that would be great and in downtown orlando we have a structure kind of in place like that that there are a couple of you know i know disney just implemented that in areas like near disney springs and stuff but there's also in whenever you're taking I forget what it's called in Orlando, but the bus it, it has its own mm-hmm. traffic way as it goes. And, and it's not completely isolated, but it, it has its own stoplights and everything. And I pers- I personally feel like I would just go the bus route. So it's it, it, but you still have to leave the other options too. You have to leave the the availability there for people to drive over and park themselves, uh, ride shares as well there too. So I I think it's. I think if they have a bus fleet that's great enough and if they do have their own kind of private roadway to get people back and forth, I don't think it becomes an an issue really on getting getting people there. I because, you know, it's yeah, yeah, it's kind of then when you think about like Disney, you have again, that is all isolated yeah. on their own property so they can control it better. They they don't have to worry about as many uh as many stoppage ways along the way stoplights and yeah. stuff like that but you know if you think about it in that concept each each hotel is going to have their own bus transportation to this park so and, it's and i just, feel like it's no farther away than like disney springs is from animal kingdom yeah you know if anything i feel like it might take me longer to get from disney yeah. springs to animal kingdom than it would to get from park to park here yeah uh, it, it's something that i really haven't thought a lot about because it doesn't bother me the fact is it's what universal has to work with it's the land that they now own and they they can't just buy out everything in between the land they currently own and the new land that they own and they're building on so as long as if they can make these extra attempts to do stuff like create a better uh, road infrastructure to make sure that traffic is in their favor when getting people back and forth then i think i think they're really working with orlando on that to make sure that it's good because ultimately if they fail on that aspect then it's going to negatively impact uh, how many people are traveling to these parks and stuff and that negatively impacts the city of orlando as yeah. a whole so well and there's no parking structure in this concept art so it's yeah. interesting because yeah, but they there's have two car parking structures at their other park but i can't i cannot imagine that they wouldn't build parking over there yeah you know, i'll be honest why would you put a parking structure and concept art like why would you i want to see it i want to see what it looks like i want to i want to show off this beautiful new theme park i'm showing but here the parking lot look at behold its glory behold it doesn't even a big deal about their pixar one well <laughs> and okay there's one more question in here okay. um and it's not really related to this discussion but okay. they want to know if we're going to talk about the halloween horror nights house 
uh, we're Killer Clowns. It. Yeah, if we're going to save that for next week. Yeah, that, that'll actually be next week's episode. So it was supposed to be this week's, but obviously with this announcement, the fact that we're able to shift our schedules around to go live, uh, we are we are doing this right now for you. And then next week, uh, you know, if we would follow the orders of our boss, uh, Mr. I'm Peter Werner, we would not. <laughs> yeah, we would not be having a show for you at all next week. Uh, but we're actually, as soon as we're wrapped up with this one, we're going to go ahead and record just a, a short show on Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and uh, and that's yeah, Killer Clowns. That's what was yeah. announced. I couldn't even remember at that point. We're going to record a quick one on that, and so that way we give you some content for next week. But we're going to be very busy with our our twentieth anniversary of Dreams Unlimited Travel. Uh, party and such that we're having so uh, we want to give you a little bit but also we we couldn't we couldn't wait on this one so we will get there eventually but that's that's it for questions then yeah okay yeah they're just chatting with each other now at this point that's fine we're talking no about questions. yeah just talking about back dinner. and forth and stuff you know yeah. somebody you know bringing up like well subway and i'm like you can't do that here so you can't do that here Oh, too I thought you meant the here. sandwich shop. Yeah, just too, where is the subway? Hector wants to know where the Starbucks is. Oh, there! I w- can assure you that there will be plenty of subways uh, surrounding the entire area. There will be Starbucks surrounding the area. It will all be there. So, okay. Well, if that's going to be it, then that's going to do it for this episode, uh, this live episode, the special one. So, uh, I'm sure most of the information we have just speculated on and shared with you today is all completely wrong and. Uh, at the very least, I hope that you enjoyed listening to us kind of banter back and forth about it. And, and we, of course, want to hear what you have to say, too, in regards to that. So the best place to do it is on this YouTube video, uh, definitely in the comments, because we go through and read it. And then, um, you know, just have fun. Speculate with everyone. Keep the spec train a running, if that's what it's called. Regina Spectre. I always thought we were just saying things that sound like spectating. Yeah, that, that, that's, uh, that's also what we're kind of doing there, but not quite as much. So, yeah, go ahead and leave us what you think in the comments below. Tell us where we're wrong and tell us where you hope we're right. And, uh, you know, if you can add celestial into it and by any means at all, go ahead and do that. But uh, that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I really hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again next week talking killer clowns. But until then... Still haven't changed the name.